Tony from CassetteComeback.com. So today I'm going to be looking at some cassettes which are not well thought of really. In fact, a lot of people look at them and shudder. Why is that? Well, because they have the word CD in it. What does that mean? Well, if you watch my video on the Sony CD it, you'll see that, you know, strange packaging appealing to the youth, etc. Last of line, they're not held in great esteem by purists, but that doesn't mean that they're bad cassettes, because they're not. Now today I'm going to look at the other side of these, we give the Sony some time, so we're going to look at some TDK ones. Now, this is a first generation CD in two. It looks very sober, it doesn't look very shouty or youth orientated, it just looks like a decent cassette. But it does have CD in the title. Now, probably the most common one is this type, which is the last of the line CD in two from TDK, and it's got a big CD on it, position chrome, even though it's a cobalt dope ferric, and these are quite common and cheap, but are they any good? Now, for our friends across the Atlantic, we also have this, the TDK CD Power, which is not something we can get easily in Europe. But, are these just rebrands of the same thing, or are they actually different cassettes? Because these are the two I'm going to focus on today. But the CD line and TDK CD line, I mean, they started putting CD on SAs and other things from about 1990. But I just want to show you this one as well, which is probably my favourite CD. It's this one. It's the Walker CD 2. Note the TDK there. Now, there's a few cassettes, I think. Only TDK Ferric came out in Europe with this symbol. But in Japan, for a while, this was the TDK symbol. And this isn't a knockoff. This is actually a genuine TDK cassette. And it's a very interesting one, this one, because it comes out with a little sort of snap-on thing, which allows you to just shove the tape straight in your pocket without having a case, which is quite interesting. But again, the overlying thing with all these CD type cassettes is that the gimmicky, last of line gimmicky cheap, that's the problem with them. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to look at these two, I want to see how they sound. But uh, let's just unwrap them first so you can have a proper look at what we're looking at in case you didn't know. So The CD2, basically, from what I can tell, looks like it's a, a D shell, but with Type 2 tape in. What Type 2 tape is it? Is it SA? Because at this time the SF had gone. Is it SA tape? Is it still remnants of SF? These went for a long time, so I doubt they'd have been remnants of SF. I, my guess is that they're probably filled with the least good cut of the SA. So basically, if you think about it, they do it in a big roll and then they slice it into pancakes. The ones in the middle are going to be the prime ones, the ones toward the edge might have a bit of frame, might not be as good. So my guess is that's probably what went into the CDing. But it's not a bad looking cassette, the shell's okay, but it is, like I say, a D shell. And incidentally, this is the tape that they used for the Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, awesome mixtape not not the ones that you actually bought but for the pictures because you can just see the little cd and rings underneath it if you actually look at the picture now the cd power is a different kettle of fish let's open this one up and again this is only for the usa now this however i think is a very handsome tape if we look at that um i'm not a massive fan of all clear shells unless they're really good but um, this one looks certainly more premium than a CD in two. But again, what tape is this? I mean, at least the CD in two has a screwed shell. The CD power doesn't have a screwed shell. But that's all for nothing, as long as they sound good. Because these two are some of the most reasonably priced type two on the market. Well, this one is if you're in America. But let's 
get them biased up, let's compare and contrast, see if they've got the same tape in them, see if they've got different tape, and let's listen to how they actually sound. Okay, so I'm going to use my trusty Iowa ADS950 here, simply because I want to have a visual clue as to how the bias and leveling are, so you can see if these have the same tape in or not. So let's start with the CDing 2. Now this deck is biased for the SA, so let's see how different this is from an SA. Hmm. Okay, so if we actually look at the dials, you can see that the bias and the rec sensitivity are in the center, and this it's pretty much spot on, so signs at this point point to this being SA stock. So let's see how the CD power compares. Now, if we look now same settings dead center the cd power has well it needs more bias signal and it needs a bit less level so if we just tweak this so let's reduce sorry add some bias to it take the level down yeah so as we can see it's quite a bit different to the cd ing Oops, I'll get the hand of this camera at one point. But basically, yeah, as we can see there, the CD power isn't, for first glance, the same tape as what's in the CD2. So, leaving that as it is, let's have a listen to the CD power and see how it sounds. So I'm going to use another track from the YouTube Royalty Free Library. And this one is called shoulder closures. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's have a listen and see how the old CD power handles some music. sounded very very good to me peaking at plus four you know I'm, I'm listening to this straight from here and my ears couldn't tell a discernible difference between that and the source so uh, as far as I'm concerned this is quite a superb type 2 now let's have a listen to the CD in 2 and see how that compares so we're just going to have to bias this up again because we've already determined that the seeding two biases differently. So let me just, uh, yeah, so I've got to reduce the bias 
and the level put it at centre but we're there. So let us now play the same track on CD2. a bit down. So here's the thing. I don't like the CD in two. A lot of people have said they've had nothing but good results. But for me, when I bought these back in the 90s, I had a lot of problem with wow and flutter on them. And I still have a problem with wow and flutter on them. On decks which aren't, you know, dual capstan at least, they're better with decks which have a pad lifter. But I don't know if you could tell I could there because I've got my headphones in. The left channel on this sounded quieter than the right. And my problem with this cassette is I think they're very inconsistent. I do think that these are the, you know, the, the, the cheap cuts of the tape when they're slicing it up into pancakes. The good stuff in the middle goes into the SA, the stuff around the edge gets put in a cheap D shell and turned into the CD in two. And that's why I don't like these. But, I digress. <laughs> So yeah, back in the 90s, I didn't like these. I mean, these were very common when I first saw them. It's like, whoa, CD cassettes from TDK, Type 2, wow, multi-pack of 10 for only something like 9 99 Gotta have them. And I didn't like them. I had lots of wow and flutter. I had lots of level drops like we heard there. It was only small, but it's there. I never really liked these cassettes. That's why I approached the CD power with trepidation, thinking, is it going to be the same? But you saw it there. My deck is calibrated to SA. This didn't need any sort of manual bias changing or level changing. It just calibrated like an SA. Why? I believe this has SA tape in it. Makes sense that this time they're making the SA. Why would they make a new formulation for CDing? No, they're using the parts of the tape cut that weren't good enough for the SA, so use them in the CD in two. The CD power, however, you saw it. This needed more bias signal, i.e. it's brighter, and it needed less level than an SA. What TDK cassette might that be? Whereas the CD in two, I think, is the lesser offcuts of the SA, I have a feeling the CD power is the lesser offcuts of the SAX. This is a superb sounding cassette. I think it's good looking. Yes, it does have a welded shell and not screwed, but that's only really a problem if you need to swap the tape. Other than that, 
sonically welded shells are more stable and more rigid. You just can't open them. It's a cruel trick that TDK actually only sold these in America because if these were available in Europe as commonly as these, I don't think there's much reason to choose any other type too. So in America, these are well, well worth getting. With one caveat, there is a 110 version. It doesn't like re-recording. The first couple of re-records were fine, but by the third or fourth re-record, it was starting to lose level two. That could just be uh, how TDK tapes are at this time, because, you know, a lot of people say that they have tram lining issues on them. It could be that the 110's like that. But the 90, I think, for my money, is as good as an SAX and looks as good as an SAX. And if you're in America, these are really, really worth getting. If you're in Europe, I do have them in stock, but they ain't cheap. Now, the other CDing is a CDing 1, and that's going to get a video all by itself because I think very differently of CDing 1s than I do of CDing 2s. But there we go. CD power, CDing 2. If you're curious about them because they're common and they're fairly cheap, there we go. I hope that helped. So please do like and subscribe. Tell a million of your closest friends. And until next time, happy recording. Bye-bye.